Hi there, this is Ted M. Young, also known as Jitter Ted. Welcome to the series of recordings from my live coding series where I'm developing KidBank, the money tracker for kids. This is episode four, where I finished the implementation of importing transactions from the CSV comma separated file. Enjoy. Where we left before the break was we got deposits working and now we need to handle importing interest credit. So let's do that. So it's basically gonna be this test. Oops. Uh, so import, uh, actually let me rename this because we're already at a CSV, uh, CSV import test. So let's just say single row CSV deposit. And this one is going to be a single row interest credit uh, that should still result in a single deposit we can take out multiple deposit rows <clears throat> and this is interest credit actually let me just go grab one that's real let's grab this one Uh, we'll replace this with this. Uh, we don't need a new line. So, <laughs> okay, this one's going to be interesting. Uh, I expect it to still process the number correctly, but when it converts this $0.08, it'll come out with just 8. So this should just be 8. The date's February 1st, so February 1st. And then this is that string. Okay, so I expect this to fail. Let's see what happens. Well, that's interesting. Um, oh, because we weren't, we were assuming it was a deposit. We weren't checking it at all anyway. <laughs> so that works. Okay. Um, where it's going to be fun is uh, if we do this <clears throat> now as a spend, single row payment should result in single spend transaction. So uh, payment is, if we look at this thing, payment is one of these. That's what we're calling it from here. But what it's going to be called in is going to actually be a spend transaction. And right, so this interest credit should result in a deposit. So it did. Um, now let's go and grab this. Okay, this is interesting. So the way Excel did negative numbers uh, is it surrounded by parentheses? We actually, so I want, so, okay, so a couple of options here. One is we could totally ignore what this column says and just look at the whether this is a positive or negative amount. So in accounting, they usually put um, parentheses around negative numbers. I have no idea what the source of that is, but I know from my, <clears throat> from my work with accounting stuff that um, instead of putting a negative, a minus sign, you basically put um, parentheses to indicate that it's a negative number. So all these are deposits or because they're all positive numbers. This one's a payment because it's a negative number and this other payment is a negative number. So in a sense, we could ignore this column, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna assume that that, that means something. Uh, okay, so let's go and grab this one. Go back here, replace this with this. And this is going to be a spend one, and it's January 4th, one, four. Um, this part is this part. So I'll take that, place that, and it's 30 times 100. Okay. Um, 
I expect this for, to fail for two reasons. One is we're not actually currently stripping out parentheses, so I expect it's going to try to do it as a deposit and it will throw an exception, basically a parse exception on the integer. So let's see if my hypothesis is correct. Indeed. Um, yeah, so a number format exception for that. So let us go and fix that. So when we, uh, when we do the replace, we can put in parenthesis. Um, that might be enough. Let's run it. Okay. Oh, duh. I need both sides. Okay. So that parsed it correctly. And now really the only difference is that we were getting a deposit, but we expected a spend. So now we, since we've been ignoring transaction type, now we need to pay attention to it. There are a couple of interesting options. One that's going through my head is using a map to map the transaction type to uh, a lambda, um, which is <laughs> which is interesting, right? Because sort of what's basically a, a switch statement, right? So switch on transaction type. Um, you can always convert a switch into a map that has lambdas. It's kind of weird because really that's what a switch is. Uh, a switch is probably more readable, um, although it depends. If you're going to have a fixed set of things, then a switch is more readable. If you're going to have variations <clears throat> upon some configuration, then a, then a map might be useful. So let's, but what we want to do is we want to have a method that says uh, basically um, transaction, transaction equals Create transaction for, well, let's do it this way. So what we want is basically a switch, if I could spell, uh, and we're going to switch on the transaction type. What are you saying? Yes, I know it has an empty, but I haven't written anything yet. So. Transaction, declare it over here, and uh, the case of if the transaction type is cash deposit, then we will do transaction equals this thing, and otherwise default, um, we'll throw an exception. Uh, it's basically, <clears throat> could you use an illegal argument exception? That's always a good one to fall back on. Um, a known transaction type and throw in the transaction type. Uh, that's unreachable. Of course, it's unreachable because we didn't do a break here. Okay, so we haven't changed anything. So uh, if we go back to our CSV import test and run all of the test methods in here, um, they'll all pass except for the one we're working on. Uh, ah, interesting. Okay, that makes sense. And this one fails too because interest credit is not one of the deposits. So we can fix that one pretty quickly. Um, by adding another case, so we can say case interest credit. So now that should fix that test. And then the spend one should still fail. Okay. And so what we can do is say case payment. And then this transaction is transaction create spend, local date time, amount, description, break, and boom. Um, I'm going to extract this into uh, uh, parse transaction. Create transaction. And, and 
line that. So now we have, uh, I'm still a little uncomfortable with this. Um, because I, so there's sort of two levels of abstraction here. We've got one where we're doing sort of part pulling stuff out of, of a list and then we call a nice neat method. Uh, I could have pushed uh, the CSV cells into this create transaction from, you know, <clears throat> I think I'm okay with this for now. Um, mainly I wanted to, to um, push, um, mainly I wanted to push this switch down so it's out of the way so when I'm reading this it's, it's more readable, right? So we're basically parsing these and then uh, we create the transaction based on that stuff. Um, all right, so if we run all the tests, they actually should all pass now. Close. What did I mess up? Um, these look the same. I wonder if there's an equals issue here. So we've got Expected transaction with date, action, action amount, and source to be exactly, oh, so this is 2019, this is 2018. Oh man, that was kind of annoying. All right, uh, that means my test is, is wrong. Uh, this should have been 2019. Okay, so now it should, now it should work. I was worried that, that our equals method wasn't working. Okay, cool. So now we can, uh, let's run all unit tests. I still expect now that um, the one at the account level to fail, but all the other ones pass. Cool, so let's go there. Um, so now we have the CSV importer uh, working. So let's go and commit that. So CSV importer now imports. Uh, de cash deposit. Well, actually, now also imports interest credit and payment transactions. Um, I'm not going to check in this file. Uh, no, I'll check it in. Okay. And uh, do that. All right. So now our account test, we want to um, <clears throat> load transactions. So now we want to basically load a bunch of transactions into the account. So this has nothing to do actually with, uh, with the CSV. Um, we've now converted a CSV into uh, a list of transactions and now all we need is that account can load a bunch of transactions. Um, And so we'll have uh, the controller deal deal with that. So uh, so let's run our uh, integration tests. I, I don't think anything is broken there. Why those took a while for some reason. Okay, so those all are, all are fine. Um, so let's go back to our uh, controller. Um, and actually, let's go back to our controller test. So we want to create a new load command that takes uh, basically a bunch of lines of string, lines of CSV, and we'll use the CSV importer to convert those to transactions and then add that to the account. 
So what that will look like is, uh, so import command should load uh, transactions into account. <clears throat> so this is going to be uh, an import command that we'll create. So I'll create a class. And that's in the web adapter, yes. And so we'll new it up and we'll hold it in a variable. Um, so what do we need in this? This is basically going to be just a list of string. The question is, how does that come in? Uh, that might come in as one long string. I actually don't know. Um, I actually don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, let's. Um, all right, so let's jump to the UI because uh, I actually don't know what a text area, how it sends multiple lines, what that looks like. Um, let's see. That's a good way of checking that. So. <clears throat> Uh, so parse HTML input text area lines. So as you use a line separator, <clears throat> so what does what do they say about it? Uh, Number of visible text lines. That's the labels. Bunch of properties, but I want the text. Yeah, so what does that look like? Um, one, two, three. I don't know where that send button went. <clears throat> uh, so, does this have multiple rows? No. All right. Uh, I'm going to fall back to the debugger for lack of a better way to do some empirical testing. Um, so let's comment this out for a second. And let's go and uh, we'll create, we'll eventually put this to a separate page, but let's create a form that uh, accepts <clears throat> Um, it's going to accept, uh, what is this? This is the, the import object, import command, and its action, oops, is going to go to uh, import. And it's going to be a post. And we're just going to have label uh, paste CSV here. And then this is going to be a field on that object, which is going to be a CSV. Or actually just content and not going to have any default value there. Um, although I guess we could have the def well, the default will come in if we put something in there, but the type, oh, so actually this is uh, uh, going to be text. So wait, what is, 
Indian input text area. Oh, uh, text area associated with a label, max length, wrap. Um, Columns, form, max length, name, placeholder, rows, that's just for visibility. So the question is, would I use text area or input, sorry, input element? Search, man, text. No, I guess I actually do want a text area. Okay, so that's not that. Um, this is actually text area. Uh, I've never used a text area, I guess, with time leaf. So should I just use the auto closing? That doesn't look right. Let's look at time leaf. So time leaf text area. Okay, so it is. So basically, uh, I don't, that's interesting. There was a later one. Let's look at that one. Okay, I guess I won't basically won't use the auto closing version of that, so I'll just close it. Okay, um, let's restart the app. Oh, I didn't create a uh, post mapping for that, so it's going to be hard to do anything with that. <clears throat> All right, let's stop this. Um, what we want to do is we want to figure out what does multiple lines of text look like. So what we're going to do is in our account controller, we'll create a post mapping for import and uh, import CS, CSV, import CSV, and um, this is going to be an import command. Uh, and what we're going to do here is actually, um, we're going to just set a breakpoint uh, and run it in debugger and see what this thing looks like. So let's go to import command. This is basically a private string um, uh, content. And we'll put data on this so that Lumbox stuff will get generated. And we need to remember that we need to put a blank one of these in the model, model and attribute, content, uh, sorry. What did we call that object? Called it import. And import new import command. <clears throat> okay, so let's run this under the debugger. Okay. Uh, 
All right, and let's go over here. We'll refresh the page. So <laughs> I guess I should make that a little bit bigger. That's fine. Uh, so let me actually paste, let's close that. And close that. Um, let me actually paste some actual CSV and see what it looks like. So I would be basically doing something like that. All right, um, I did not put in a submit button. I keep forgetting to do that. Darn it. It's kind of hilarious. Button type equals submit. And it says uh, import. I seem to be using exclamation points as my brand here. All right, uh, we'll quote recompile that. All that does is make sure that I can reload the page properly. We'll paste that in. Oops. Paste that. Why are you not? Oh, okay, so that's right. And import. Okay. So in our import command, okay, it looks like we've got, uh, that's kind of funny. So the content, is basically it's it is using uh, a return uh, a new line return line feed kind of thing so basically Windows style um, so it's one long string now what'll be interesting is if I change all right so let's do this let's go to import command let's say this isn't a string but actually a list of string will uh, and we'll have to recompile everything so build build project. So the question is, will spring auto convert that into a list of individual strings? Uh, yeah, let's restart the debug session. Um, I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Whoa, what, what went on here? That was weird. All right, let's just restart. Okay, refresh the page. Okay. Okay. Uh, so import command, content is not array list. Well, okay, that's interesting. Um, that's not at all what I would have expected it to do. <laughs> um, it decided it was gonna parse along commas. Instead of new lines, why would you do that? That I that I I don't know. Um, okay, well, so clearly that's not going to work. Uh, so what we we'll want to do is we we'll want to have a way of grabbing from the import command, um, turning it into to multiple lines, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. That's um, um, uh, I'm sure Guava has. I mean, we could use the the raw splitter. Um, Oh, so actually, the question is, is mm, yeah, well, those will get those will get trimmed out. Okay, well, that's not what we wanted, so let's go. At least now we know. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's turn off the debug there breakpoint. Um, really should also make that bigger. So. That's rows equals, I don't know, 40 calls equals uh, curious how wide this is. What's the widest here? That's 60, so I'll put 80. Okay. Um, All right, so what that means is as our import command, um, clearly list of string does not do what we want. So we're gonna have basically string as content. And so now we're, what we'd like is a method on, um, uh, on import command that will easily convert 
that string and parse it along uh, along new lines. Um, so we can say uh, so public list of string um, as lines, and then we basically will do uh, splitter. On hmm. what we want is we actually want on a character matcher. Care matcher, not white space. Is there something new line breaking white space? Hmm. It's not white space. So let's do this. Let's. Let's say guava split string new lines new line separator. Yeah, so again I could use a split, but that gives me an array. Uh the splitter. Okay, so it looks like pattern compile this guy. Right, so pattern compile. So cool. I can just do that. We learn through examples. In case you didn't know that, we learn through examples, and so we will use this example. Um, should probably pull this out into a constant uh, new line separator pattern because uh, no point in compiling it every single time so we'll do that and then we can say um, split to list uh, oh we should probably omit any empty lines um, and because that'll take care of there's a sort of an empty new line at the end and then we'll uh, basically split to list on content and basically return that. Okay, so um, that means that uh, account controller What we'll basically be doing here, uh, do we have a, I was, was I writing a test for this? Yes, here it is. Okay, let's actually write that test now. Now that we know what import command needs to have. So import command, set the content. Uh, what we want is to go here, we'll grab uh, these three lines, because what's nice is these are the three different kinds of transactions we're going to have. And let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, carriage return line. Feed. Let's actually use the ones that we saw from the browser. Oops. Okay. So this is three transactions. Um, I don't know why you're not. Lining up. Oh, because it's a plus. Um, <clears throat> right. So this is basically one big string. Uh, these are not, so basically, these are the new lines that would come in from the browser. And um, now we want the account controller, which we, I guess we need to create. So Actually need to create an account with an account controller talking to that guy. And now on account controller, we want to import the CSV with the import command. Uh, we expect that to put the transactions into the account. So we expect that our account 
the transactions, we expect there to has size of three. Um, we could be more precise and describe exactly what the transactions are. Um, let's just, let's get this to, to see if we can get this to work first. Uh, I expect this to fail because I don't think we've done anything other than grab the import command and return a redirect. So yeah, so that didn't do anything. So let's go ahead now and go to our import CSV. Um, we get our import command. Now here's where we need to uh, use uh, a new CSV importer. Um, in a, after I finish this, I'm going to make this uh, an injectable service because this is basically a service thing. Uh, so on this, we're going to import from import command as lines. Um, and then we're going to save that as transactions. And then account. Uh, oh, we forgot to load the transactions in bulk into the account. I think I had was working on that in the account test. Um, right. So that's the last missing piece. Um, so we need this. Uh, I know we've been saying that it's a set, but really it's a list. So we'll leave it as that. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we have our account. Um, we'll create uh, a couple of uh, transactions. So those will be the transactions to load, and that will be lists uh, as list. Um, and so we'll create a transaction. We'll create a deposit. Of the date time of 2020, 2015, 5900. Zero, zero. Uh, what comes next here? Comes next is the amount. So seven, eight, two, three, and uh, source, or we'll just say transaction one is a description. So that's one of them. Um, this is really annoying. Let's do that. So this. Okay, so now it's nicely formatted. Uh, transaction, where are we? We can still have another one. Transaction, create a spend, local date time of, of 2015, 5900. And we're going to spend 25.95 on transaction two. Um, what happened as list what did I miss up here uh, great deposit returns a transaction this is a list of transactions is it unclear oh is this a, the the uh, That should have. Um. Oh, this is Guava. Okay, that's why. Uh, all right, so let's do this. Um, equals new array list. Transaction and then uh, we'll just do transactions to load add 
I know there's probably another syntactically shorter way to do this, but um, I'm at that point where my brain's not working as well and a partner, a pair would be really good right about now. Uh, okay, so let's reformat here. Okay. So I'll import this static method. That. Um, so we have the transactions to load. We expect that when we do load it, we exact we get the transactions. So we'll do this. Uh, uncomment this. Load transactions to load. Uh, we'll create this method, and it doesn't return anything. That's cool takes a list of transactions, transactions to load. Um, we will do nothing. We will run this test. We expect it to fail. And good, this test fails because the transactions are empty. Um, so all we need to do is, so here we had add new transaction and added a single one. Um, we want to do basically something like that. So um, it's add all the existing transactions and then actually add all uh, the transactions to load. So this will combine the ones that we already have plus this bulk load of transactions uh, and then reassign it back to, to the internal variable. So now if we go back to our test and we run it, um, it should pass unless our equal to is wrong. Uh, yeah, so we can't do an equals because this transactions returns an immutable set, whereas this transactions to load an array list. So what we can actually just do is we can say it contains uh, exactly that. Um, in any order. Oh, but it's, darn it, it's expecting... Uh, it's expecting this to be a, uh, a variable number of arguments. Uh, is there another method we can use here? Let's see. Compare using comparator contains uh, let's make you bigger. So what we want is we want one that oh, contains all. Right, because that's an iterable contains exactly elements of exactly in any I think we want this exactly in any order of, right? Because it's a new account, so that's what we want. And then we can do transactions to load. Okay, so let's run the test now. Um, awesome, it passed. Okay. So now we have a way to bulk load transactions into our account. And uh, in our controller, we can now use that method. We can say account uh, load, load these transactions and then redirect. Um, and so now in our account controller test, <clears throat> we can now run this one. And so it has size of three. Um, we could do a bit more work to actually create these and turn these individually into transactions to verify our uh, our input. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say um, contains exactly in any order. Oops. Uh, so we're gonna have three transactions. So we've got transaction. We'll create a deposit. This deposit is a local date time of this is the first one which is March 7th 2018 at midnight um, and what else <clears throat> the amount is 550 so that's 550 and the string is bottle return and then we have Another transaction 
Uh, so this one's a payment. So this is called a spend. We'll go take time of, so this one is March 25th, 2018. Oops. 2018, March 5th. Oh, March 25th. And it's 1200 because we convert that to a positive amount. And I'm not going to be able to spell this correctly because Game Castle is spelled funny because that's the name of a store where my son plays Magic the Gathering. And then this last one is an interest credit, which is a deposit of local date time of uh, 2018, April 1st. No, it is not April Fools, except the interest amount certainly is, would seem that it's April Fools. Copy this. And this, and okay, so now we're going to say that these are going to convert to these. And we'll run this test. Awesome. All right, so I think we're just about done. Let me run all the, all the tests, and then we can actually try it out from, from the UI and see what happens. And then we will call it a day. So I didn't get to do the um, I didn't get to do the persistence, nor did I. Although we can do sort of fake persistence. Uh, all right, everything passes. Um, let me commit all tests pass with controller handling lines of CSV to import, and so we will. Uh, commit that. So we'll go back to, whoops, go back to here. We'll reload the page. It would help if we actually ran the application. I'll reload. And there's our CSV. Yes, clearly we're going to need to put this on a separate page and, and, and make the rest of the page nicer. Uh, let's go and now paste the stuff in. Um, oops. Grab a bunch of these. And boom. Look at that. So it's in reverse chronological order. We've got a bunch of transactions. The spend amount is $12. Um, I'm assuming this adds up correctly. So what, 50, 54, 56, 61, 67, 72, 77, 69, 66. Yep, okay, so the math is good. The sources are good. Um, the actions are correct. And it loaded them all up with no errors. I think we're done. If any of you are watching this and have any feedback or comments or anything, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So uh, this was broadcast on, on Twitch, so twitch.tv jitterted. You can also visit my, my webpage, which is tedmyoung.com. 